We live in the era of flowering plants. They're the basis of all our ecosystems, so they're important to everybody, whether we realize it or not. My love of native plants came to me through my mom. And so, for me, that's a very profound connection. There wasn't very much about my mother's childhood that was pleasurable. They were droughted out, they were grasshoppered out. It was a very, very deprived and difficult childhood. And yet, she came through that whole experience feeling like a child of the prairies with her love for shooting stars and, you know, the exquisiteness of blue-eyed grass. And, and so that's a very deep connection for me. So I really like native plants because they work in harmony uh, both ways. They also help the animals, the uh, wildlife around it. They help native people who are around it and they help us, pe uh, the people who are on the land right now. And like to have the connection with native plants is to know this land. It's so important to have natural areas and native plants around so then you can find your sense of place or, you know, have your thoughts be like, these plants can thrive here, so can I. I love their cultural uses, their ethnobotanical uses, so the ways that people have used them in the past, it kind of connects me to my roots and to Saskatchewan specifically because I grew up here. I don't know, I've always kind of loved flowers. Like I have a bunch of native flowers tattooed on me and I'm happy that we get to do like active invasive species management because I think we hear a lot about that and it's cool getting to do like hands-on removal and like mapping of it and stuff. It actually feels like I'm making a difference. The thing that inspires me about native plants is they're just so resilient. I mean, anybody who's lived in Saskatchewan for any length of time knows how hard of a province it is for humans to live in. It can be plus 40, it can be minus 40, and these plants have weathered this for millennia. And they're still here, despite you know all of the natural pressures put on it, all of the pressures that we have, as humans have put on it, and I think we need to step up. Every day, more and more prairie is being lost, so I think it's really important that Saskatchewan pays attention to the areas that we have left and why they're important and the benefits that not only we get, um, but all the other animals that are out there, the bugs, the birds, we all thrive having native plants there. Our Rare Plants and Ranchers program has been around since 2012. It's about 140,000 acres in size now, and I would say that it's our flagship program. And how it works is we'll sit down with participating landowners, we'll learn about their land management practices, and we'll collect a whole bunch of data, range and repairing health assessments, we'll map out the plant species at risk populations, we'll note any threats that we find, and we roll all of that information into a beneficial management plan that once both parties are, are happy with that, we'll help them implement that with ongoing logistical support and dollar matching for any of the practices that require funding. Then every five years we'll return to the land to recollect that data and make sure that the plan is on track. The Native Plants Society is part of an ecology of conservation organizations and it's the only one that focuses just on plants. Well, plants are the basis of our ecosystem. So you could say that the Native Plant Society is the center of that ecosystem. We've worked with landowners a lot. We've worked with ranchers for a long time and grazing operations. But the Rose Creek Ranch Conservation Grazing Project is a really interesting project. It's the first time that we've worked directly with grazing animals to target a certain species. So in this case, the goats are working on leafy spurge, which is a noxious weed in Saskatchewan. It's really invasive, and it's taking over an otherwise very beautiful, pristine prairie area. And so what the goats do is they will target leafy spurge. They love eating it. Livestock like horses or cattle will generally avoid that. And so our job is to go in prior to goat grazing, take a whole bunch of measurements, then go in after the goats have been through for the season. We've done that for several years now, and the difference is night and day. 
these ranchers have proven that it's not very difficult. They still run cattle. And when everything else has failed to control leafy spurts, if you if you tried other biocontrol like beetles, if you've tried herbicide, the goats will will work if all of those other things have failed. In Saskatchewan, we know that we have maybe 11% of the original native prairie left. We live in one of the most endangered ecosystems in the world because so much of the natural vegetation has been disturbed and destroyed. So we have these precious remnants left. The Native Plant Society was actually the first organization in Saskatchewan to address the threat of flowering rush and probably one of the first in all of Canada. We're certainly the first to have successfully dealt with an infestation of flowering rush. It's this really aggressive invader of riparian habitats. The only way we were able to deal with it successfully was by digging it out. And it took 10 years of backbreaking manual labor, but we did it and it hasn't come back. But in that time, there have been a couple of other introductions of flowering rush into the province. For example, in the South Saskatchewan River, it's come down um, from Alberta and we're trying to hold the line. If it does manage to get further down, we may lose that battle completely. So we've canoed hundreds of kilometers of the South Saskatchewan River on both the banks and we've mapped every last location. And then we've gone back and fight it like a fire, fight those spot fires, those spot infestations, and then work at that outer edge and, and bring it further in. And we've been really successful, but we're trying to also buy time until other things like biocontrol come online. And there are, are some biocontrol candidates that are very close that will make our job much easier. But until then, it's just us out there and we're very dedicated. And I have to hand it off to, to the volunteers that have helped us. We've had many organizations involved in helping us map and remove. Uh, as well as just private citizens who really care about the environment in general. We need to have natural habitats. We need to know what's growing out there. Um, we need to be able to look after these special places. And the Native Plant Society is important because that's its focus. That's the job it exists to do. So 2025 is the 30th anniversary of the Native Plant Society of Saskatchewan. I am lucky enough to have been involved with it for over half of that time. I look back into the archives uh, of what happened, you know, in the, in the 90s when the Native Plant Society started up. I even remember back to when I first started with the Native Plant Society and the growth has just been monumental. The people that work for the Native Plant Society of Saskatchewan are just the best people. And the membership, the membership is so solid. We send out a call for volunteers and my inbox fills up. We send out a call for donations and they start coming in almost immediately. So I can't have anything but positive thoughts and good hopes for the future knowing that about the society. I've been learning a tiny bit of Nehewewewin. And there isn't a collective noun that just means plants. There's the word medicine. There's the idea that the plants that grow here are Mother Earth's children. We need to be working from that basis of understanding. And we need to have laws and programs that will help us heal this land. I and mean, it should be a priority of our society to protect this natural heritage. I hope for the future of Saskatchewan's native plants and habitats that they get the respect that they deserve. I think if we knew just how important they were, we would do a lot more to try and give them a future in the province. 
be that kind of grassroots conservation and restoration or policy change at the highest levels of government.